today's Python and Excel crash course. There's a lot going on in this field, and I uh, just want to give you a quick overview of what the possibilities are with using Python and Excel. So best way to do that, I believe, is to open Excel and do it. Uh, to that effect, if you want to follow along, uh, the download files are going to be here. Uh, I almost guarantee you somebody's going to come in later asking where the download files are. I try to keep an eye on the chat, but uh, if you could be so kind, if somebody asks for those files, feel free to share them. You're also welcome to share them with colleagues or whomever might be interested. Just to keep things moving, let me fire up the deck. I'm sharing my screen. We are recording. And I'm not one for filler, so we're just going to dive right in here. Okay. My name is George Mount. I'm the founder of StringFest Analytics. I do data analytics training and consulting based out of Cleveland, Ohio. I'm a Microsoft Excel MVP. If you're not familiar with the program, uh, it's something given out by Microsoft for those who have exhibited some kind of technical or community leadership and excellence in the field, my case being Excel. Uh, the author of two books with O'Reilly Media, Advancing into Analytics, is my first one. That one covers how to learn Python and R as an Excel user. So it's a little bit ahead of the curve there. This one came out in 2021, well before any official releases came out for using Python and Excel. Uh, my latest one here is Modern Data Analytics in Excel, came out earlier this year. Subtitle is Using Power Query, Power Pivot, and More for Enhanced Data Analytics. So a little bit about me. Love to hear about where you're tuning in from in the chat. Uh, what, what interests you in this topic? What questions you have? My basic goal for today is to meet your acquaintance with the Python and Excel environment. We are going to look at some basic tasks that might jog your thinking in terms of what can I do with this? And I'll try to answer questions about how this all works. You know, often the first question is, I don't have Python and Excel. How can I get it? What are the plans going to be? What are the packages available? We can certainly go over those, uh, but I did put a cheat sheet together in the resources, which again are linked to in the chat. Let me open up that folder. Uh, and there's this uh, Python and Excel useful links file. Let me bring that over here. This might be the single best place to get those kinds of answers. Again, I'm not uh, averse to answering them. These answers change quickly. So really, oops, I'm not sharing that doc anywhere, am I? Uh, really, the best place might be to just, again, go to the documentation. That's what I do. That's what other MVPs do. Uh, so if you want to know how do I get Python and Excel, you can go to this link. It'll show you here are the channels that support it. Here are the versions that support it. If you're interested in what the packages are, we'll talk more about packages in a little bit. That's where you can learn more about it. If you want to learn about Copilot with Python and Excel, which we don't have time for today, but I did a session the other day on that. Uh, Py Power Query, we'll get to that, how Power Query plays in with Python and Excel. Uh, all sorts of other resources, okay? A uh, really cool cheat sheet that a fellow MVP, Minda Tracy, put out for this. So again, this is in your resources. So uh, this is a really good one-stop shop for all those kind of like logistical questions. I'm hoping that I can get everybody's hands on the wheel, as it were, with Python and Excel and take this thing for a test drive without getting too bogged down. And, you know, how is licensing and how is this? And I don't have it and stuff like that. This is where you can go for that stuff. I can help you out as much as I can. Uh, I also am a consultant, so you know I can help with large scale requests in terms of training and setting up and so forth. So let's go ahead and just head into this Python and Excel crash course folder. And again, those resources were linked to. I'm gonna put them in the chat just in case anybody is looking for those. Uh, I see some folks from Arizona. I see, okay, there's already a question about the resources from Scott. So yeah, I put that in the chat again. Craig from UK, Arizona, St. Louis, I'm assuming, SDL. Uh, Maria saying I'm new to Python. You're in the right place. Uh, we're gonna take this from scratch today. All right, so probably not gonna get to everything today. We are recording this. I will leave the resources up, uh, but I've basically broken this down into three sections. First, what we're going to start with is just understanding the rules of the game in terms of how Python works in Excel. All right. Now, uh, we're going to understand what these packages are, what are packages in Python. We're going to look at getting Excel data into Python. And then we're going to look at crossing the path between 
how Excel works with data and how Python works with data. So we're going to go ahead and move into this PIE environment workbook right here. Again, this is in the resources. Please do share this if anybody comes in and don't have this stuff, you are welcome to share that with them. All right, so we're gonna start from scratch, okay? Uh, and we are just going to look at how this works. Python and Excel is available in the formula tab up here. If you do not see it and you don't have it, okay? If you want it, you can check out the links that I shared, all right? Um, ideally, I would definitely suggest, so, you know, one is get it on the formula tab, okay? Two is learn Python apart from Excel. So Python's been around for basically as long as Excel has, maybe a little less time, but it is one of the most popular programming languages on earth. People use it for everything from deep learning to web development, database interactions. So there's a lot of other stuff that you can do with it outside of Excel that would benefit you as an Excel user. So uh, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. Hopefully as time goes on, there will be more interactivity and more features that you can do with Python inside of Excel. But I would encourage you to learn Python apart from Excel. A good resource for that might be something like my book, Advancing in Analytics. That's the first book that I have. And that's actually gonna teach you Python outside of Excel. Again, it is convenient to have Python in Excel, but Python is kind of an invited guest into Excel's world, right? And whenever you're an invited guest, you don't exactly live the way that you otherwise would live, right? You're kind of on a different set of rules. And that's what I like to think about Python. It's behaving a little bit differently than it otherwise would outside of Excel. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so the other thing to understand is this initialization environment of Python and Excel. Okay, I'm gonna put this in big caps. Python was not designed for data analysis, okay? That doesn't mean that we shouldn't use it. It just wasn't designed for that. It was really more designed to be a operating system, interaction, scripting, processing errors, like just a general purpose programming language. However, due to uh, packages, so packages solve this, right? As the tech bros on Twitter like to say, uh, we can go up here to, again, this is the Python ribbon. If you do not see this, check that resource link that I shared earlier. If you missed that part, check the recording. I'm also going to throw the chat in the chat, the download files again. Okay. Just so everybody has it because I do see people tuning in here. All right. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go to initialization. Okay. And over here, there is a set of what are called import statements. This is your starting lineup for working with Python and Excel. These are really the tools that are going to make this an easy process for you. Particularly, we have tools like Pandas, we have NumPy, we have uh, Matplotlib, we have Seaborn. We're going to stick with those for right now. For your data analysis and manipulation needs and your visualization needs, these are going to be really important. Without these, it would be very hard to work with Python for any kind of data analysis, regardless of whether you're working on it in Excel or not. Now, there are some other packages, and I like to think of these as almost like apps for your phone. So, you know, like there, oops, there's a package for that. And I even think I put that in my book. So whether you're trying to build a particular visualization or work with a particular data source or do a particular data analysis method, there's probably a package that can help with that. However, the way that Python and Excel is designed, we're really working with a limited subsection of those. Again, we are working on a kind of a guest tenant basis with Python by using it in Excel. The pros of that are it makes it a lot easier to manage and access the cons of that. We don't necessarily get all the power that we otherwise would if we were just using Python independently, right? So there's some flexibility versus uh, ease of use kind of trade-offs there. Hopefully that's making sense. If there are any questions, please do let me know. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. And let's just start with the basics right now. So I'm going to X this out and we're just going to build our first lines of code here in Python. I'm going to insert a Python cell. There are a few ways to do that. You can do equals PY on your keyboard, OK? And that is going to enter a formula box into your workbook. So we are going to be using the formula editor, just like before. We're basically going to have bits of Python code 
added to cells in our workbook. Okay, this is telling me that I'm using standard Python and Excel calculation speeds. I'm gonna disregard that for right now. Uh, there is a licensing platform tier in terms of speeds and stuff like that, that uh, is happening. Let me just X out of that because we can still run this. If you see that too, don't worry about it. Equals PY and let's do something like uh, my object. Okay. I'm going to call this hello world. All right. If you've ever programmed anything, you've probably seen something like this before. Okay. Now this is telling me that I don't have a runtime. So let me reset my runtime. Well, if you see this blocked error, this means that uh, you don't have any compute. So let me make sure that I have some compute. Let me go oh, to, over to insert sample. Okay. That's not working. Okay. Let me restart my Excel here and see if I can get some compute. Again, if there are any questions about this, this is a premium product. So once you hit a certain threshold, you start getting throttled. And I think that's what might be happening to me. OK, so let's try this again. My object equals hello world. OK, well, that's not nice, is it? OK, um, let's formulas. Uh, let's try to reset this one more time. Reset runtime. OK, fine. Learn more. OK. All right. If anybody else out there is uh, able to run this, that it would be a good sign. Uh, I'm for some reason having problems. So what we might do is skip to the very end of this session today, where I will show you how to overcome some of these limitations. OK. Uh, OK, this was not what I was expecting for today. All right, let's try one more time. OK, so I'm not having luck here. All right. I'll try to maybe reschedule this part of it. This is why I always like to keep backup stuff for training. And this is a new product, so these things happen. OK, uh, there's a lot of stuff you could do, but not everything that you can do with Python and Excel uh, can, and not everything that you can do with Python for Excel is in Python in Excel. OK, Maria says that mine works, so OK. That's a good sign. Uh, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead to the, the last section here. Just, you know, I don't want to just throw away this meeting because I'm having technical difficulties. Uh, we're going to look at some other things that you can do with Python uh, in Excel uh, using Python independently. So Python in Excel is all about data analysis, visualization, statistics. It's a data analysis tool. And if we go back here and, you know, maybe if I restarted my computer or something, I mean, I did test this earlier. Of course, it's not working now. Uh, let's see if we could try this one more time. All right. That's really annoying. OK. Um, all right. We're going to we're going to punt on that. It lacks Excel automation features, and you're also relying on local, I'm sorry, you're relying on cloud computing. So this is being executed up in, in a container in Azure. It's being sent back to your workbook. So things like this can happen, right? You're relying on someone else's compute. Uh, you're relying on a plan for speed. You could get throttled. You could get blocked for whatever reason. So you, know, you do want to be aware of that. Now, you can run Python locally. That's going to cause some issues your IT team might not like that it's it's more complicated to do that but you are going to get more power from this okay so let's go ahead and do this part of the session most of you should be able to follow along with this because we are going to be running this part in the cloud I'm going to be sharing a link okay to let's go back to teams okay Question from Tony, that would be a question for the developers at Microsoft. Uh, I, I really don't know what the future of that is going to be, but I am going to show everybody how to run Python to automate your Excel workbooks in the cloud uh, right now. OK, so you're going to go to this link that I shared. Go ahead and just click 
launch binder. All right. And this is going to run. This is going to run a session up inside of the cloud. Question from Avi, does Anaconda Toolbox do that? I'm assuming how your where your calculations are being executed. Uh, it's something similar to that. Uh, I don't know exactly how those computations get computed, but uh, by, by and far, the way that Python in Excel is working is going to be through the cloud, okay? So there are pros and cons to that. My retort to people saying that's a huge security red flag is like, there's so much stuff that is done on the cloud now, right? We're doing stuff on the cloud right now. You know, local on-prem compute is a great thing, but it's not so common these days. So, you know, use it, caveat mTOR, right? Buyer beware. I am letting you know the pros and cons to the best of my abilities. If you want more assistance and more, you know, help with, with what's right for you, welcome to, you know, talk about that further. But just to show everybody the basics and keep this as a, you know, awareness raising session, I guess the first thing to be aware of is that, uh, yes, sometimes things go wrong with a new product, and that's what's happening with uh, Python and Excel right now. Uh, so we have a backup, and that's why we're doing a backup. Uh, so I'm letting this run. This is going to uh, execute a Python session online, so you don't have to have anything installed. Uh, and we are going to walk through this once this loads. It's going to take a second. Apologize for everybody's... Uh, inconvenience here. It sounded like a couple people were able to uh, run run Python and Excel. Let me just try that one more time. I'm going to close my workbook again. Okay. And let's open this. All right. P1. Okay. Let's see. Okay, it's working now. <laughs> That's too funny. All right. Wow. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to actually go back to the session. That is too funny. I think I must have just been getting throttled or something and not having enough resources. So let's try this again. We're going to do my object. We'll go back to the workbook. You are welcome to let that other thing run if you want. Uh, let's say, hello world. We are going to control enter to commit that code. You are going to see that this will give a busy signal and we do get a result here now. Amazing, okay. So this is one cell. You're going to see if I click on this cell, we do get a bit of information. Now this is just one cell, so this isn't very exciting, but we are using a linked data type here. So it's really good to know that now we are working with Python objects. We might want to get different attributes related to that object, which we can do because this is a linked data type. So if I wanted to bring over what kind of data this is, in this case, it's a string. If I wanted to, and I'm using, and you might not be able to see it on my screen, but uh, there is this little icon like to the upper right-hand side of the uh, data that lets us add these attributes. This can be particularly helpful once we start uh, looking at bigger data sets. Of course, you know, just adding a single cell isn't too exciting. Uh, we will look at an actual data set in a second. But again, just to get you the rules of the game here, if I were to go ahead and add another Python and Excel cell over here, let's insert Python. Okay, that's another way to do it. There are some resources over here, some basic examples. And again, you are going to see that by and large, most of these have to do with descriptive statistics, visualizations, correlations, things like that. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and refer to my object. This is going to work pretty similarly to basic Excel, right? We do have the IntelliSense. We can start to hit tab to complete our thoughts, control and enter to execute that. And we will see eventually that hello world is now showing. However, if I were to refer to py, my object over here, you're gonna see that something's not right already. The IntelliSense is not triggering. Control and enter. And we do get an error here. Now, when you get errors, you are going to get a diagnostics pane over here, okay? 
uh, this will give you some errors such as my object was not defined. We do need to write this in uh, left to right and up to down order. OK, so Python, the way this works is it's really more of a script where things are read from you know line one down to line n. Uh, in Excel, you know, you hit recalculate and everything just recalculates all at once. In Python, we're really saving our operations to objects. Those objects are being reaccessed and reused and different points in time in the script. So we want to be aware that we are developing things and you'll see what a lot of people will do is just take one column, maybe do one step here, do one step here, do one step here. Very similar to a, uh, yeah, like SQL, for example, uh, a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this is really the tool for using Python for data that a lot of this interface was really designed on. So uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about how to use Python for data, learning how to use a Jupyter Notebook, which I use in my first book, Advancing into Analytics, and also my second one um, would be useful. So that's the basics of just inserting these objects. And this is pretty boring, right? We're just working with one cell. So let's get into something a little bit more exciting where we are actually working with uh, multiple cells here. OK, now I looks like I need to. Uh, bring in this data set from the other worksheet. For some reason, it's not in there. OK, so let me copy and paste this. Uh, Jupyter notebooks are free. Yeah, to answer Maria's question, uh, a lot of Python is free and open source, which means that anybody can use it, build on it. Very little intellectual property restrictions. OK, cool. All right, so what I just did in the chat was paste a, a tiny data set. This is uh, population and land area of New York City. So we are going to practice working with this data set and getting it into Python and Excel. OK, so I have this range. I would definitely encourage you to convert your data into a table before importing into Python and Excel. Like any other things, if you're using tables, this is more likely that your inputs aren't going to break. It's going to be more dynamic and responsive to anything that you might change later on in your analysis. So let's go ahead and do a Control and T. We will convert that into a table. I've done some training on tables. There's also a chapter about that in my book. So make sure that you do that first. We'll also make sure that this is given a proper name. Let's go ahead. I'm clicking inside of table design. OK, and under table name, you're going to see something like NYC pop. That's what I'm going to call it, NYC underscore pop. OK, so let's go ahead and actually insert this data. Previously, what we were doing was just kind of typing one cell and assigning it into an object. It's probably not what you want to do at a large scale, right? We're not going to be working on one cell of data at a time. So let's see how to load this in. Uh, there is a special function that will let us do this. I'm going to call this PY. I want to give this range or this table a name. So this is the point at which we are going to assign data to an object. Right, everything in Python in general, you're going to be following object oriented programming principles, which means we're going to save things to objects and you know, program based on properties and attributes and so forth of that object. If that sounds scary, don't worry about it because these packages that we're going to be using were really developed for non coders in mind. I don't have any formal computer science, software engineering training. I wouldn't expect that you do either. And in fact, I think that you're going to see that a lot of what we do here in Pandas and Seaborn and these other packages really aren't any harder than some of the acrobatics that you have to do sometimes in Excel in terms of writing several functions to do one thing, right? To do all the different hacks and tweaks to build a particular plot. There's actually a lot of hard stuff that you have to do in Excel with DAX and with M. And you're learning multiple languages there, which I always thought was pretty wild that you know to be a data analyst in like Power BI, you need to know like two or three languages. We're going to use one here to do a lot of our data analysis needs. All right, so let's call this something like NYCDF. DF stands for data frame. That's just a common, uh, common convention that a lot of people use for any kind of data frame. We're going to use this Excel function. We're going to see that our headers are equal to true. So this is a function pretty much built and bred just for this purpose of bringing data in from your worksheet into 
your Python and Excel environment. So this is really just a like data import step. Now this gets to the question that a lot of people have, which is, can I use Python to import data into Excel? Unfortunately, the answer to that right now is no. So if you were looking to use Python to do web scraping or work with an API or something like that, those are great use cases for Python. Unfortunately, you are excluded from doing that right now because Python and Excel really only works in this closed system of the workbook. One option that you have with that is to continue to use Power Query to do those data import steps, and then you can connect to your query. I'm hoping at one point there would be a way to write Python scripts inside the Power Query editor in Excel, similar to how there is in uh, Power BI. Yes, good shortcut from Chuck, Control Shift U to expand a class formula editor. As you're seeing right to Chuck's point here, these code blocks could get increasingly long. You know, I have my code font to be pretty big. Another option up here that's a good segue from that is if I come up to formulas, uh, and you might may or not may not see this, uh, but I have a button here called editor. Uh, if you do not see this, there is a alternative. It's called the uh, I think it's the Python editor from Excel Labs. There's a resource that I put. Let me see if I can find this useful links sheet here. Yeah, Python editor from Excel Labs. Okay, let me put this in the chat. So if you want a larger environment to write your Python code that does have better features, right? This has better syntax highlighting, the IntelliSense, it's almost like a little script editor over here. You can pop open that editor. You can continue to write it in the cell uh, box as well, in the formula box, I should say. But here we have a data frame and you'll see I can continue to use these uh, linked data types. So if I click on this, I will get a preview of the data. This is a pretty small data set, so it gives me the whole thing. If I wanted to get a preview over here, you will see that we are using a, a distinct notation here, uh, and we are using linked data types and dynamic arrays in this case. So anything that we do that introduces data from Python that goes into our Excel grid is going to be stored as a dynamic array. Now, some of you may be familiar with dynamic array functions. Uh, how do these work? What is a dynamic array? What is a dynamic array function? Usually in Excel, right, when we write a formula, that formula stops and starts in one cell, right? But what we're doing here with dynamic arrays is this could spill out to a dynamic number of cells, right? It is, a, it is a dynamic array. So this could have been, right? What is this, three by five? This could have been four by six, whatever it is going to spill. And if you put anything to block it, right? It is going to give you an error telling you that that uh, spill range is blocked, right? And you need to get rid of that so that the cells can spill. So just a little bit about dynamic arrays. What you're seeing here is that Python and Excel is using a lot of new modern Excel tools, whether it's linked data types, dynamic arrays, working with Power Query, a lot of different tools that, again, I would suggest you be familiar with these basics of modern Excel, as it were, before you get into uh, working with Python, because you're going to need to know them to really leverage Python to its fullest. Awesome. OK, so we've done that. Uh, let's go ahead and do something like uh, get solutions. And again, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. So here we have our data frame. From here, let's go ahead and work right inside of this script editor. OK, so we can do a few things with this. Uh, if we wanted to do something like uh, find the population density of this data set, we can take this NYCDF, you're going to see that this notation is very similar to Excel tables, which again, is a good thing to think about that once you are learning things like tables, it's really putting you in a programmatic state of mind to get the most use out of tools like Python and Excel. Let's take the density column here. Okay, and I'm going to, this is going to be called printing the data, the data frame. So in general, right, you'll do your calculations and it's generally a good idea with Python and Excel to just type out the name of the data frame that you want to visualize at the end of your script. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. 
Okay, we do see the data frame here. And if I expanded this, we should see a density column. Now, if we wanted to actually display these results in the workbook, yes, we could take a preview. For right now, it doesn't really matter because this is a small data set, but if we wanted to show the entire data set in the workbook, come up here, it's immediately to the left of the formula bar. It says Python output will convert this to an Excel value. And now we have these values expanded into our grid. From here, we can do a lot of different things. We could easily format this. Python is not the easiest tool to format and present data with, but you know, Excel makes data formatting pretty easy. We could, I don't know if we wanted to get a count of cells, for example, count A, use that spill operator, close parentheses. If for some reason, uh, let's go back to our editor. I decided that I didn't want this column anymore. Let's go ahead and just comment that out. These hash signs are what make comments in Python. We'll see that this recalculates and this automatically re readjusts based on that spill error, error. So that spill reference operator. So if you've never seen this before, this is uh, Excel's notation for referring to a dynamic array. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, question from Avi, how did I get to the Python editor? Um, I, I think I'm on the beta channel right now. So if you're on the beta channel, it's just going to be in the editor box right here. Uh, if you are not, you're not going to have it, but what you can use is the uh, Excel Labs add-in. Uh, and I don't remember how you get to that, but I put, put a chat in the link. So I put a link in the chat about uh, where to get to it. Awesome. Okay. Let's look at actually making a chart from Python in Excel. Uh, now, there are a lot of cool visualizations that Seaborn in particular has that uh, Excel does not. And everything we're going to do is based on syntax. Now, uh, there was a question about the Anaconda toolbox, and that is a good resource here and one that I think I think I put in, okay, so I put some resources from Anaconda. Uh, let me put a link to the Anaconda toolbox uh, in the chat, because as you are starting to build out these visualizations, if you want help building these charts, you're not really sure what's available and you don't really wanna write out the code on yourself to get there, uh, you can use this anaconda toolbox what this will let us do is it will actually give you okay it'll give you some sample data sets but also it will ask you what kind of chart do you want what do you want on the x-axis what do you want on the y-axis and so on and so forth so these would be some really good training wheels for uh getting started with building charts with python and excel okay we're gonna write some really basic ones so for example let me go back to the grid here. Now, again, we want to make sure. So I've set up NYCDF up here. If I want to build a plot, again, that plot needs to be written either to the right or underneath the cells. And maybe to save some space here, I might just convert this back to an Excel value. And what you'll see some people do here is almost create like a little I'm sorry, I want to convert this back to Python object. Is almost create like a little uh, something like data import, right? It's their first step. And then their next step is build chart. So you're almost writing your own set of steps. And it is in some ways beneficial, right? That we don't necessarily need to show all the data that we want to calculate on. The way I like to think about this, Excel really likes to show you the outputs first, and then you have to hover over that data to see what the inputs are. Python's kind of the opposite in that, in general, you are looking at the inputs, and if you want to see what's stored in those inputs, you need to print them or show them in some way. So we could do something like this. Now that DY NYCDF is assigned, let's create a chart. We could build something like uh sns dot bar plot 
Okay, and you'll see that a lot of these plots really follow the same syntax. We're going to specify what data set we want to analyze with, right? And data equals NYCDF. We're going to say what goes on the X axis. Uh, we could say something like popular borough. Uh, and then on the Y axis, we could say population. Okay, let's close the parentheses. Now, this is going to take a couple of steps to really get this to show on our workbook. First up, I want to switch this out from a Python object into an Excel value. I don't really care that it's an image. I want to see what kind of an Im image it is. Okay, we have that here. Now it's in this really tiny little uh, cell. So this is using the new image in cell feature that, that Excel has. It's very hard to see. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could resize the, the cell like this, but that might throw off the coordination of the rest of your worksheet. So really a better step here is going to be, let's right over here. There is a little icon that says create reference. It looks like a picture with a little link underneath it. So if I click this, we are going to get a bigger uh, grid here. I'm sorry, a bigger image. Now this image is really just a picture. Okay, it will update. So if I, you know, change any of these numbers, it will change. Okay, but I do not have some of those features like any kind of tool tips. I can't right click in here. It would be very easy to save this as a picture, for example, right? Because it really is just a picture. So it does have some pros and cons. There's not a ton of interactivity. There are ways to build very interactive visualizations uh, with Python, but the way this is right now, uh, not too much. And again, a bar chart is something that Excel could handle on its own pretty easily, but uh, there are certainly going to be different visualizations uh, there are things like uh, that you might want to check out, like a pair plot. There are things like uh, strip plots or swarm plots, uh, even things like small multiples. So the idea with that is that you want to maybe break down a visualization and show the relationship uh, for two variables across different categories. You want to try to break things down into smaller multiples, right? You can do that in Power BI and Excel. It's kind of hard to build. Anytime you're looking to build multiple plots at the same time in Excel, it really stretches the limits. Generally, you have to build one plot at a time. So uh, these are some examples, and uh, I don't know if we'll have time to get to some or all of them, but uh, definitely things to check out. Okay. Okay, so I see a big... <laughs> uh, okay, yes, steps to add the Excel labs. Yes, thank you, Yasser, for sharing the steps on, on getting that. It should be a pretty similar experience to what you're seeing here, but it's not identical. All right. Any questions uh, so far? Appreciate the, the questions so far in the chat. And uh, thanks for staying tuned when we had our little I A T hey V I T issue there earlier. Okay, so let's take a look at some specific examples of where you might find using Python and Excel to be beneficial. Okay, uh, we're going to look at things like data profiling. We're going to look at working with time series data. We're going to look at how to visualize our data. So we're going to head over to a new worksheet right now. This one is called uh, Hard Excel Easy Python. Let's go ahead and open this up. All right. So we're working with a bigger data set. Yes, thank you, Python. Okay, we're with a bigger data set here. We have some sales and we might wanna build some different analyses and visualizations that would otherwise be kind of difficult to do uh, in Excel. Not impossible in general, but just harder. I really wanna break that distinction that just because something's being done in Python means it's necessarily harder, okay? Uh, so let's take a look at doing that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, again, make sure you read the data set in. I'm going to go ahead and call this sales DF. Okay, we have our data stored as a table. So we have a few options here for storing the data. I'm using this head method just to print those first five rows. You'll see this is a pretty common convention. 
And again, I do need to be consistent here. I also want to make sure that I'm following case sensitivity. So uh, if I were to capitalize something like this, make it a capital S, we're not going to get that to work. This is pretty small on your screen, probably. Let me see if I can make that bigger. OK, yes, yeah, so we do need to follow case sensitivity a little bit different than regular Excel. Let's go ahead and save that. OK, uh, let's move on to. Looking at some, you know what? I'm going to move right on to looking at some visualizations, I think. Um, Okay, let's take some data here. Okay, these are some pair plots that I've built earlier. Now it looks like the data for this is not available right now, but that's okay. You do see the code here and this will save us some time uh, from live coding anyway. So what I'm working with on this one is a miles per gallon data set. Okay, yes, questions. Okay, Anaconda Toolbox. Uh, yeah, uh, I haven't used it in a while, that Anaconda Toolbox, but uh, it is in general availability right now, so it should be pretty easy before you needed like an invitation to use it. I haven't really used it in a while. Um, I do have that post that I wrote earlier uh, that I shared the link to, so that might be a good resource there. Uh, so let's look at these visualizations uh, that were done earlier. So this first one is a pair plot. I really like this one. I like to think of this as almost like a correlation matrix just visualized in uh, our worksheet. So what we have here along the diagonals are the distributions of each variable. We can see that they are labeled, right? And we also see the scatter plots showing, right, the pairwise relationship with each pair in the data makes it easy to understand, you know, do we have outliers? Do we have positive correlations, negative correlations? Are these variables evenly or normally distributed? So really can be useful for helping us detect, are there any problems with this data? Uh, is there anything we might see as a mistake or just a pure outlier, right? Uh, in general, do we have positive negative correlation? So even if you're not interested in building any kind of predictive model, stuff like this is really important for just understanding the integrity of your data and understanding the, those relationships between, you know, product review, ship time, wait time, profits, ad spend, whatever you're doing, you really want to understand how your data looks, right? And the best way to understand how your data looks is to actually visualize it. And this lets us do that at a pretty high scale. OK, and what's really cool, too, is right with just one line of code here, uh, I am going to. In this case. Break this down by origin, right, and I'm going to add what's called a KDE or kernel density estimate smoothing line here, so it's a little bit easier to just see the, see the shape. Maybe I'm not as interested in the particular discrete bins. This just gives us a little more smooth of an overview of understanding what these variable distributions are. OK, and then I could even break it down by the origin. So this kind of gets into the idea of uh, like clustering. Now we're not doing a clustering per se, because all we're doing right now is just plotting what the points are by their category. But if you are interested in maybe finding clusters of customers or products or things like that, you can do those clustering algorithms rather easily with uh, Python in Excel. And a lot of the packages that were written to do that, again, were not really written for developers or programmers. They're more for citizen data analysts like me or, or maybe you too. Uh, so that's another thing that you might be interested in here. OK, some other plots here. Uh, I really like these strip plots. So if I go to the code on this one, what we're doing here is uh, anytime you're binning or aggregating your data in a visualization, you're really losing some of the level of detail. So if you think about it, even something like a you know histogram, if I go back here to my pair plot, uh, once we put a data in a bin like that, we don't uh, we don't know its exact value anymore, right? We're binning it, which means that we're really losing some of that 
into detail about what those values are. So really the, the way, the most lossless way in general to build a visualization is to visualize each individual observation. Now, how do you do that when you're just looking at one value across categories? Well, you can do it by something like this, which is called a strip plot, which essentially what we're doing here is adding some random noise alongside each of these points so that we are able to see a pattern right for each category so uh, really there is just an arbitrary uh distance between all these individual points but what we're able to easily see is okay there seems to be a lot of density here some density here and so forth we can kind of see the overall range uh, it's a really cool visualization that lets us get a lot of the benefits of a scatter plot when we're looking at a quantity by category right instead of looking at two quantities okay now again this might not scale depending on how many points you add this could get a little messy but depending on the size of your data set there's some things that you can do uh to overcome that uh let's see what else i've got here okay so correlations is something you're probably familiar with uh, we looked at the pair plot time series analysis and let me bring my uh, solution file over here So if any of you are, yeah, question, can I confirm that no variables in code can be linked to an Excel cell? Yeah, um, I mean, that is possible. So uh, let me actually share a workbook. Uh, okay, I'm going to put this in the... Um, I'm going to put this in the chat in a second that might be of interest okay downloads and almost there Appreciate the patience. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where did my teams go? Okay. There we go. Uh, can I concatenate Python photo, code and Excel formulas? Not at this time. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, if you're looking for something similar to that, uh, Stefano, I think what you could do would be more similar to in Power BI with Power Query. You could indeed um, add a step in your Power Query workflow that's using M code. So that's not really an Excel formula, but then you can insert a Python snippet in there. I thought I could have uploaded a file into Teams chat here, but I don't see that option. So let me put this in the chat. This is answering a question, no variables, you like to Excel cell. Um, I'm, this is an answer to obvious question, I think. I just put a link in the chat for this. Uh, So what I'm doing with this thing is, this is a moving average chart in Python built in Excel. What I've done here is created like a drop down. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working right now. But if I were to change the number of days to smooth by, this will update so we can use and if we look at the code here i am just using one cell as my input that is going to drive okay so we have 20 days here if i wanted to change this to 30 right that is going to change that to 30 if i wanted to change this to weekly right that is going to update to weekly at some point so there we go. So now we have we a weekly 30 period uh, moving average. If I wanted to change this back to daily and make this every seven days or something like that, 
uh, I could do that. So here what we're doing is we're using these individual cells, almost more of like a financial model, right? So that uh, users can input. We could add data validation here, right? We could say, choose a period between five and 10 or something like that. And I do have a drop down here. I don't know why it's not working because nothing's been working today for some reason. Appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, but if I do type in, you know, weekly, for example, uh, we can get that thing to change here. It does take a second or two, okay, to update that plot. But uh, yeah, that might answer that. Okay, let me go back to the uh, easy in Excel. Okay, time series in general, to go back to the workbook, is a pretty good use case for Python and Excel. Uh, as the butt of internet memes galore, right? Dates in Excel aren't always the easiest to work with. So if you are looking to do things like moving averages or leading and lagging variables, or e even something like resampling the data where you just want to be able to easily get total sales or total quantity by week or something like that, uh, not always the easiest to do to re-aggregate your time series data in Excel. And there's some pretty cool stuff that we can do here with pandas. Uh, pandas being, among other things, a shortcut name for panel data. Uh, so it was really built and bred to be a, a time series package to work with time series data. So some cool stuff that we can do there. We can get our leading and lagging variables. If you wanted to do things like a running average or a running total, I just solved an Excel challenge the other day where somebody wanted us to do a running total by group. So right for each group of products or locations, get that running average. Uh, Python and Excel made it super easy. You can do that in one line of code versus a lot of other solutions had to take a lot of other lines of code. So uh, again, Python and Excel, not always harder for dates, for visualizations, for building interactive charts like what we just did uh, in this workbook. A lot of cool stuff that you can do. Uh, with these tools. So uh, last but not least, we don't have too, too much time, but I think I still have, okay, maybe I closed it, uh, but let me see if I can at least open up that code uh, for the interactivity one. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what we're doing in this file let me put this in the link. Let me put this link in the chat. Now, as we were saying, Python in Excel really is just built for data analysis, predictive analytics, visualizations. If you really wanted to automate an entire Excel workbook using Python code, you're going to need a full installation of Python on your computer in general. Now, what I was doing before we were able to get Python and Excel to work is show you how to simulate that on a cloud version of uh, Python. But what you're going to see from this workbook is I have a data set here. I want to fully add, I want to make Excel charts using Python code. I want to add conditional formatting using Python code. I want to build out a complete file, right, with Python code so that I can just run this kind of similar to like Power Query or something or VBA. Uh, the advantages are that we have access to all of these packages that VBA doesn't necessarily have uh, access to. We can build plots specifically here, right? VBA doesn't really make plots. It can run Excel plots, but it doesn't have its own plotting engine, for example. Uh, so there are definitely advantages to doing something like this and what you're gonna be able to do with a tool like that. And you know we don't have time for that today, but you would be able to build, and this is a very simple example where you know, I've inserted this data, I've inserted it as a table. This would also allow you to actually use Python for some of those data retrieval APIs, databases, stuff like that. Do all of your formatting manipulation, add your charts. You can add an Excel chart, you can add a Python chart. So it's really the, the widest open set of scenarios, but it is definitely the, the hardest to run and, and get set up and learn. As you're going to see, some of the code here gets kind of laborious. We're doing a lot of loops and if statements. So definitely good to be familiar with Python code before getting too far down this path. Okay.
So I think that's all the time we have for today. Really appreciate everybody's patience there. I'm sorry we got to kind of a rocky start with the Python and Excel environment not cooperating, but we powered through. We're able to get through a lot of good stuff. Before we close, just want to say I do have some other sessions coming up in the next few days. So I will send out a link with the recordings and everything else. But if you do have any time before the hour closes, uh, I do have an event feedback form. So, you know, I do these totally free of charge. I never ask for any money. I don't ask for donations on Eventbrite or anything. Uh, all I really would like is if you can just give me some honest feedback, what you liked today, what you would want more of, what you would like done differently. Uh, any kind of reviews that I can use uh, to market my services would be greatly appreciated. So I put that form up in the chat. Uh, if you could uh, take a look at that before you log off, I would really appreciate that. Uh, and then I would love to see you at another session. Hopefully next time we won't have uh, <laughs> any issues with. We won't have any issues with. Python and Excel. Uh, let me put this other link in the chat. I'll send this recording out in a couple minutes as well. OK, appreciate the kind words, everybody. Oh, no, that's the one that I just gave you. I wanted to give you the one from Eventbrite. OK, but you do have that feedback form, too. OK, so uh, let me share that, too. While you are filling that out or logging off, so I've got one on AI coming up on Friday. We're going to be talking about Power Query, Power Pivot, get into some, into some other stuff that I'm working on, like Office Scripts, Power Automate. So uh, if any of this is interesting, please do sign up. These are all free. So you're welcome to attend or just sign up and you can get the recording if you can't make it. Uh, okay. I'm going to stop recording and I will take any final questions. Okay.